The markets are closed today, but we did receive a statement from Federal Reserve Chairman Powell. We also received data on personal income and spending. I will discuss the key points of all of this, what it means for our markets, and whether or not a correction is imminent. Keep in mind that a correction implies making necessary corrections. I'll cover that in this video as well. For $3.99, you can support a guy who creates YouTube videos to share knowledge and wealth as widely as possible. However, that is not what this is about. Let's get started. First, we had the release of the PCE, which mostly met expectations. However, it wasn't perfect because the PCE number from last month was revised, going from 0.42% to 0.45%. According to the three upward revisions, the previous month's 0.42% was revised down to 0.4. As a result, your 0.45% is rounded up to 0.5, which represents a 6% annualized PCE number at the pace from last month. This last well, this was the revised data from January. The data for February indicates that the core year's percentage change from the previous year was 2.8, which was the lowest in three years. The six-month annualized rate was 2.9% in February for comparison. It was 1.9% in December and 2.6% in January. If you look at this chart, the light blue area represents the annualized rate for the last three months, and it is basically going vertical at the fastest pace since early 2021. This data today truly confirms that inflationary pressures are rising. The Fed's concern over this is the true question, and the quick answer is not really even though inflation is actually rising again over the past three months. Jerome Powell says the February figure is probably more in line with what we want to see. Powell also notes that his initial impression of the PPI this morning was in line with expectations, which is wonderful to see. You guys need to keep in mind that this is an election year, and Fidon Powell is already receiving numerous letters from senators pleading with them to lower rates. He is currently being politically harassed, and both sides are putting a lot of pressure on him. In my honest opinion, though, Powell is just pleading for an excuse to start lowering rates, sadly, neither he nor many other government officials have received anything to support the Fed's rate cuts. Feder Powell continues by stating that while cutting rates too soon would be extremely disruptive, waiting too long might have unintended negative effects on the labor market and the economy. Jerome Powell then declares that we are prepared for the economy to behave in unexpected ways. In essence, he is asking what kinds of unexpected ways the economy might behave in, such as a sharp decline, in which case you should be prepared to cut interest rates. You're pleading for an excuse to start lowering rates, and from what I can tell, it's not really all that subtle. Here you're saying that if the economy does take a sharp turn downward, the Fed will cut rates we're talking about aggressive rate cuts of 50 basis points to 75 basis points rather than simply raising them in response to positive economic growth. Pace Joyce Powell asserts that doing it correctly is of utmost importance and that we should wait to reduce Fed rates until we are more certain. Remember the whole argument that you have to get the federal funds rate above the rate of inflation just to bring it down? Well, that was talked about a lot in 2022. You're now substantially higher than the year-over-year -year rate of inflation, so you would have to see some crazy spikes in inflation. Jerome Powell reiterated that the Fed has been saying this whole time that there's going to be a bumpy path down to 2%, and we are in the middle of one of those bumps. Whether or not this is truly another rise in inflation, or if it's just a temporary bump in inflation that the Fed doesn't know yet, he says we don't know where rates will go back to when this whole thing is over. It but Jerome Powell did say at the most recent press conference that you shouldn't expect them to go back to where they were pre-pandemic or post-pandemic during the first year or so of the pandemic around zero. But he said there's a lot of uncertainty around that, so they might go back to that being that low. He also reported personal income that came in at 0.3% month over month, which was slightly lower than the consensus of 0.4%, but otherwise fine personal spending by individuals was one of the month's highlights, coming in at 0.8% positive, while the estimate was 0.5% positive. This indicates that people are spending money, which is good for the economy and GDP overall, but at this point, I believe the Fed is begging for an excuse to start reducing rates. Jerome Powell, but even with that information, you're still not understanding it. Keep in mind, though, that investors would prefer a robust economy with high interest rates than a weak economy with low rates. Which brings me to my first concern, how will all of this information in Powell's remarks affect the markets next week? If you watch the most recent video on the channel, you'll see that over 60% of market participants in a hedge fund institutional survey conducted by CNBC anticipate further market declines. That's a fairly high percentage. Here's an example of an investor AI sentiment survey, which gauges sentiment within the market. Half of investors are positive. Right now, there are two 7.6% neutral people and two 2.4% bearish people. 
Last week, there were four 3.2% bulls, an increase of about 7%. Uh, you know from two weeks ago to last week, that's a lot. Everyone seems to be positioned bullish, but now coming to expect some kind of market pullback, that's interesting because when everyone is this bullish, that's typically when you do see a correction happen now, the actual word of correction implies that you need to correct something. If you look at the triple Qs, if you look at the S&P SPY, you've basically been vertical. So that needs to correct, but if you look under the surface of the SP and the NASDAQ, not everything is done that well okay. So what really needs to correct well NVIDIA? Has started this correction phase remarkably, NVIDIA just had its first red week since January. First, the stock was literally going straight up, and it just had a red week. Could the selling get even more extreme there? Probably what about your other AI stocks like Super Microcomputer or MicroStrategy for crypto other stocks that have ran huge in 2024? Those are likely the areas that need to. Correct, you could throw Meta in that category. You could throw Amazon. You could throw Microsoft in that category as well. I think it's likely from here that we do get a correction, but I don't think everything is going to correct. I think the stocks that have seen the most inflows, your big tech names are likely the ones that are going to correct, whereas if the Fed is going to start cutting rates, if they're not concerned about inflation the economy is holding up, that would be a good time to invest in small cap stocks when, let's face it, small cap interest rate in 2024. Sensitive names underperform significantly as compared to the SP500 and the NASDAQ. I believe that part of the markets may have already corrected, and you're just waiting for the correction to spread to the other markets. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if the correction began on Monday of next week. On Tuesday, the ISM Manufacturing PMI is released. On Wednesday, the ADP Employment Change and the ISM Services PMI are released. Federpuel will also be speaking on Wednesday. I believe that we now understand Paul's position. He is a complete bull out there, fully bullish, and he is just waiting for an excuse to start lowering rates. However, on Friday, you will receive your report on non-farm payrolls and your unemployment rate if there was ever a week in which we could begin a correction. It would be this one. Additionally, we do have some earnings coming up. PVH Canoe Payrolls on Mondays and After Hours Pre-Market on Tuesday Dave, Ears and O The Staple Meals Tuesday Evening, I guess Darkberry Livis Wednesday and the following day, Kager Brands a few more, um, Food Companies Pre-Market on Thursday, but followed by these two equities Friday is Pre-Market as well, although earnings season will begin here in roughly two weeks. Please share your thoughts on this information. Down the markets are preparing for either a correction or the next leap higher in the comment box below. If we do have a red Monday or a red Tuesday, I will inform you that the NASDAQ did close below this lower end trend line. As we begin to decline again, the 43860 level on the triple Qs is the next level you could test. If you close below that, you should look at your major moving average as the 50-day moving average at $433 per share, the 100-day moving average at $413, and the 200-day moving average out at uh, $390. With that said, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day and weekend. I'll see you in the following one.